Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this afternoon's uh, session on Siri 2.1 um, and the changes that are in it. Um, it is being recorded this session, so we can um, uh, come back to it later if you need to uh, review any bits or share it with uh, colleagues. Um, please do feel free to uh, stick stuff in the chat to ask questions and uh, we'll have a uh, an open session at the end um, because um, theory is quite a complex uh, standard and uh, I'm sure that there'll be things that that crop up as we go through it that uh, that you want to know a bit more about um, so um, what we're going to do um, this afternoon is I'm going to do a quick uh, introduction to Siri, um, only a couple of minutes, um, then look at the general updates that are being made to Siri, then look at some of the new functionality that's going to be put in place that can be used across a number of different parts of Siri, and then uh, look at the function specific changes um, and, and how uh, they're implemented. Um, this is not the most um, visually appealing um, session, I'm afraid. Um, it's quite hard to uh, to make it graphical um, and, and image heavy. So um, bear with me um, as we go through it. Um, so a bit of background and introduction to Siri. Uh, Siri stands for Service Information for Real-Time Information. Um, it's been around quite a long time. We'll have a look at the different versions in a second. Um, and it's really all about how you can move um, information about public transport vehicles uh, in a live way uh, between different systems. So. Um, we start off with um, Transmodel as a conceptual model um, that sits over all of the, the standards. Um, we've got in this country Trans Exchange that specifies all of the timetable and planning data. Um, that's moving over time to uh, NetEx. Um, to get to give that planning and then when it comes to what's going on live that's where Siri comes in if you want to know more about um, Transmodel and NetEx and TransExchange then those of you that are Arctic members you can um, go onto the website and log in and there was a series on data standards last summer uh, that covered all of those um, and so you can uh, find out more about those um, from that. Um, from a UK point of view, we started off with an RTIG protocol that was developed by members, um, and uh, that um, has been superseded by Siri pretty much everywhere now. Um, Siri, it was largely based on the RTIG work and work done by uh, VDV in Germany. Um, and so there's a lot of uh, familiar concepts for those of you that, uh, that used to use uh, the RTIG server-to-server -server protocol. Um, as said, uh, Siri's been around for a while. Um, it was first um, created as a technical specification. Uh, version one back in 2006. Um, version 1.3 came about in 2009 and introduced Siri SX and Siri FM. And I'll talk about what those are in a minute. And that's probably the version that most people are still using at the moment in the UK. Um, version 1.4 was, was a minor bug release. And version two was released um, technically in 2013, and that's a European normative standard. So 
what does that mean? That means that um, it can be applied to um, regulations and directives in Europe, um, and it is enforceable in compliance is enforceable in law. Um, and um, we're today talking about uh, Siri 2.1, um, which is going to be released uh, later this year. Um, there's a question mark in it. Um, so the technical work is complete. The documentation for the first few parts of it are done and complete. Um, Siri SX still needs a bit of work from a documentation point of view. Um, and then they go through uh, the standards processes where all of the member states um, involved in SEN um, all have a vote. Um, and that takes a significant amount of time. So you can see from, from the slide, version two of Siri was released technically in 2013. But by the time it had gone through all of the voting and all of translation and everything like that that needs to happen, it was actually 2015 before you could get the formal standard documentation from standards bodies like uh, British Standards uh, in the UK. Um, so we're going to talk about the changes in, in 2.1 um, and as you can see uh, there's there's eight years between releases so these things have a habit of evolving fairly slowly over time because you really don't want to be doing things in a rush with standards and breaking things. So Siri is broken up into a number of uh, different functions. Um, so there are some common services um, which all of them share um, and are actually shared by um, NetEx. So, for example, things like subscription processes um, and um, the processes for, uh, for, for requesting data and just getting back what you're asking for, um, not just the subscription where you uh, where you can uh, ask for data and get sent uh, any updates as, as they're produced. Um, and also in the common services area, you've got things like permissions um, and status. So is the service live? Uh, what are the functions that are available in that particular implementation? So um, functionally, Siri does a number of things. Um, it handles timetables, both um the planned and um live or estimated timetables there is a bit of crossover with with netex and and trans exchange which is all about planned so the the production timetable in siri is much more about uh, you know what's happening uh today tomorrow um perhaps you know three or four days certainly no more than a week um, then it's got some functions around um, stops. So looking at things from a stop perspective. So imagine you were standing at a bus stop and you were watching buses go past. Um, that's the view of the data that that provides. <coughs> um, it provides um, some connection monitoring. So for example, if you've got connecting services, um, where you might get off one bus and onto another one or interchange between a train and a bus, that sort of thing, you can monitor the connections. Um, it has a view of, from a vehicle perspective, so the stop uh, monitoring um, is all from if you were stood at a stop watching buses go past. The vehicle monitoring is the view of the world if you were sat on a bus. Uh, going along its route, what's going on, when are you going to get to bus stops and things like that. Then um, there's some messaging functionality, general messaging, so everyday messages that need to be transmitted um, and um, situation exchange, so what happens if there's some disruptions and things like that. Um, and finally, uh, facility monitoring, so uh, what are the facilities available on a bus, uh, at a um, at an interchange, for example? You know, 
are there escalators are they working that sort of thing um, and all of these um functions are split into five different documents um the first three parts one to three cover most of the functions the ones that were in the original um standard um part four is all about the facilities um, and part five is all about situation exchange um, and um, there is some work that's going to be starting um, fairly soon um, that's going to um, look at a part six to look at what happens and what do you need to do to um, effectively intervene to manage services so if you've got a control room what are the control actions that somebody's going to need to do to manage um fleets to you know tell a driver to to wait at a bus stop um to 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 stop bunching and those sort of those sort of actions so there's a part six that's being talked about and work's going to start hopefully uh, later on this year on that um so Parts one to four have already been submitted to send for version 2.1. Part five, uh, we're still making some uh, some tweaks to it um, prior to submission. Um, what has been complete and what you can get now um, is the um, schema for Siri 2.1. That is on the official um, GitHub. Um, site the address of which is there so you can see from a technical point of view uh, the way that all of these changes that I'm going to talk about today um, have been implemented um, it there is no such thing as the official SEN um, repository for the schema because international standards unfortunately work on documents largely I think because they know how to sell a document they don't know how to sell us a digital schema um so, and, and to an extent long may that survive because otherwise you'd end up having to pay for access to the schema as well as the documents um so what are the um changes that we've been making um the um seri group doesn't think that there are any um non that, that there are any breaking changes so if you use um siri 2 you can validate it against 2.1 um and um you shouldn't have any problems um it won't necessarily go back so if you've got a 2.1 document you might have one or two places where um you've got some validation challenges um around some of the, the the new features and things like that um but um but you know you you can move data forward into 2.1 quite safely um so um in all standards the documents are absolutely key and they're the fundamental part of it you need to know how to to use the schema and the um, and interpret it. Um, one thing that we're trying to do with Siri um, is include more um, information that would historically have just been in the document about how to interpret things and how to use the schema into the schema. So file sizes have, are increasing, but that's in the the aim of trying to help people use the the schemas without needing to refer to the documents um one of the big um things that's happened since siri 2.0 was released um is that there's a new version of transmodel the, the overall public transport model and architecture um there are some um changes in terminology within the documents so for example transmodel version 6 doesn't understand stop points anymore they're scheduled stop points um, and there's a few other language changes like that um, 
those of you that have tried to use the existing documents will find that some of the diagrams are um, quite poor quality, quite pixelated um, and hard to read. Um, they um, have been resolved, um, certainly at my end, I'm the editor for the documents. They're all really high quality, 600 um, DPI um, diagrams. What Sen then do with them, I don't know, um, but hopefully they're going to be much more readable um, and usable. Um, and the documents uh, are now fit in with the new uh, Sen standards um, for fonts and sizes and all of that sort of prettiness. Um, not technically important. Um, so um, there's a few. Um, key things um, that have changed. Um, so with the introduction of NetX, which was happening around the same sort of time that the last release of Siri came about, um, the old um, fixed point standard um, has um, been uh, depreciated um, and it's all um, consistent with NetX for its stop point structures and things like that. Um, there, there's no nothing breaking things there, um, but, uh, but it allows for some new um, features and functionality around stop points. Um, language, um, probably not too important in the UK, but it is elsewhere. So historically, you could just use uh, national language, so you could ju just say, for example, German, um, whereas now you're going to be able to say, actually, it's 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 Aust the, it's the the form of German that Austrians speak, or it's French, Swiss French, um, where there are you know local variations and things like that. Um, subscriptions, so where you um, are subscribing to data. Historically, there's been a few challenges um, when the subscription needs to be renewed. Um, so um, the way that you can do that is going to allow you now to um, extend um, the subscription rather than having to um, effectively drop it and, and recreate it. Um, it's going to be much, uh, much neater. To, to be able to to extend the termination time, um, and hopefully that will um, cause uh, or reduce the number of um, overnight drops of feeds and things like that that, that people sometimes suffer from. Um, historically, um, Siri hasn't handled branding; um, it's just gone. Um, you know, this is the operator. If, if from a customer point of view, it's been presented as something else. Um, so um, sometimes bus operators will use a, uh, a sub brand on their routes and things like that. Um, as more people um, are using Siri stop monitoring, for example, um, it's it's become clear that um, actually that branding is is really important and to save people having to do lookups with with other data sets and things like that branding's uh, included in there um, and that's potentially um, going to be more important in the UK as we get more um, franchises so um, you might actually need to know what operator is actually operating that service under a franchise, but you want it branded on all of the customer outputs, um, whatever the uh, the regional branding is or the franchise branding. Um, so that one's going to be useful um, in the UK uh, a bit more. Um, the first um, of the major um, enhancements um, is um, the inclusion of a new um function around journey relation so um it's particularly useful where you've got 
um, interchanges that you're going to need to make between journeys or where there are um, where you've got a disru disruption for example and you've got a cancellation um, it's being driven quite significantly by rail this functionality so Siri is not just used for by buses you can use it for uh, for all forms of uh, public transport um, and um, at a European level um, rail use it really heavily so they've got things like um, trains that link up at particular places and then uh, go on so and we've got a few in this country um, but less than, uh, than than continental colleagues so you can have for example in the top diagram um, a, a journey that starts off um, with two um, trains that are joined together um, and then they split at a particular point um, or perhaps you actually do it the other way around and you've got two feeder services that uh, join together to, to form one for the final part of a, of a trip. Um, so uh, that historically was, was really difficult to handle in Siri uh, to provide consistent and accurate customer information. So um, that um, is going to be quite useful, particularly for, um, as I say, where you've got um, train sets that are joining together. Um, you could use it for uh, bus routes where you've got guaranteed connections and things like that um, as well. Um, linked to... Um, that um, but slightly out of place in the order of going through things um, there's some changes to extensions um, so um, as I said right at the start um, Siri was created from the work from RTIG and from VDV um, in Germany the Germans have um, carried on uh, developing um, some local enhancements and things like that um, and um, that means that some of these changes are all about Siri catching up with um, what the Germans are doing but it's quite useful particularly where you've got um, regional um, information so um, from a bus point of view a service might be called service one in a particular um, authority but as soon as it goes over the border you call it uh, service two so you can share some local things um, and data to help piece data sets together. Um, and um, one of the um, technical structures, uh, XML structures that was um, being introduced in Transmodel um, from a conceptual point of view and NetX from a um, from practical point of view is something called value sets um, and so that allows for um, fairly arbitrary sets of data to be collected together and provided um, and so um, we're introducing those in a few places so um, one of the um, Things that actually I don't talk about anywhere else, which I should do, um, given it's a UK um, request, is about vehicle fuel type. So, um, I know, is it a diesel or is it an electric vehicle? Um, that uses uh, a value set. Um, you can use it more flexibly than some of the other structures. Um, and um, you can use it for. Um, for example, um, here, things to do with monitoring errors. Um, so why isn't a particular vehicle tracking, for example? Um, you can classify things um, and, you know, such as uh, GPS problem or a radio connection, that sort of thing. Um, linked to um, journey relation um, is uh, the development of um, train formation and compositions um, so up till now um, 
a train has been quite a um, singular concept. You have a train, um, you don't have anything else. Whereas um, you know, I'm sure you will all know, trains are made up of carriages um, and you can join trains together and things like that. So um, we introduce um, a conceptual model um, for trains that allows you to put carriages together. Um, and this is important for some of the other things uh, in a bit I'm going to talk about. Um, so you can piece things together in a much more flexible way. Um, it's important to um, understand that um, from a Siri point of view, a bus is a train. Um, it just has the concept of a vehicle. It calls that a train. Um, takes some getting your head round, um, but uh, but there you go. Um, and so um, this is quite um, useful. So um, what you would know as um, a train, um, if you stood on a platform, um, is probably a compound train, um, and that's made up of um, one or more trains. So you know, if you're, um, for example, um, on East Midlands, you'll often uh, see um, trains joined together to to get more carriages on the on the newer sets, um, and so in that case, that certainly is a compound train made up of two trains, um, which is made up of multiple train elements and components, um, which are pieced together. So um, by introducing this structure, we've got flexibility to um, have uh, much easier linking of um, trains together where they join and things like that. Um, it could be um, trams, um, probably not so relevant for bus buses, um, but um, it introduces a vehicle type group um, as well. So you can provide um, features and functions about a vehicle. So you can say, for example, um, a carriage is this long, it has a low floor or it's a double decker, it's got a buffet bit in that particular carriage. And so you can build up the, the features um, and facilities uh, at, a, at an individual train element level, at a carriage sort of level. Um, and piece all of that together. And of course, being Siri, it's all about live. So um, you can start off saying, this is the planned um, functionality um, of a train element. And then you can actually go, well, um, there's something happened. And so therefore that's train element rather than having a buffet car just as a, tr uh, being a buffet car is just a trolley for example, using facility monitoring and disruptions and things like that. Um, linked to um, the um, train element and the compound trains um, is um, the um, some significant changes to the way that um, keys are configured and uh, able to be used. So a key is a platform. Um, and so um, you can now say, um, because we know um, what each of the individual train elements are, you can, we now need to be able to say in Siri um, that um, train element is going to stop at platform um, five and it's going to be at this point along the platform so you can um, direct customers to be in the right location to, to get onto the, uh, onto the right carriage to get their reservation. Uh, and um, you, um, if you've ever been in um, trains uh, in particularly places like Germany, 
um, and Switzerland, they tend to have um, fewer platforms um, with uh, different parts to it. So you'll have trains arriving on platform five, and, you know, more than one train arriving on platform five at the same time and departing in different directions and things like that. Um, this helps support that, but it also supports, uh, helps support the next bit, which is um, the boarding position. So uh, this carriage will be stopping at this point uh, along a platform. So um, this train element will be stopping uh, at this point on the key. Um, so um, it's we've we've done some modeling with some of the bus stations and things like that and we think it will help some of the more complex um um bus station um um assignments and things like that um because for example historically it was quite difficult to have um a vehicle dropping off at one point and picking up at another um this makes it a bit easier to to, to handle that um, in Siri. Um, linked to keys, we introduce um, a flexible stop location. So you've historically not been able to do anything very useful with Siri for um, demand responsive and, and flexible services where um, somebody's um, pre-booking a service and they're going to be picked up at home or um, you know on a on a side of a road that's been really quite difficult um, so um, we're we're trying to make that easier I think there's still some more way to go on this potentially um, as we see newer um, more flexible and different approaches to, to demand responsive and flexible services um, so I think that this is one that might need to evolve slightly uh, over time, but um, it seems to cope with most of the use cases that uh, that we could come up with. Um, next, um, a biggie um, in terms of interest at the moment, it's actually a relatively small change. Um, within the series structures um occupancy um but it's big enough for us to have already produced a separate article document all about vehicle occupancy in uh Siri 2.1 um so go away and read that if you want to know much more about the detail um of that but um Siri 2 was really quite simple in the way that it could handle occupancy. Um, you basically had three values, um, which um, is quite limiting. Other standards uh, like GTFS, RT, had got um, more flexible ways of handling occupancy. And so um, the way of handling occupancy in, in Siri VM and SM um, has um, been enhanced and so you've now got all of the GTFS um, options available as well um, which allows for more translation and easier translation of data between systems. Um, that's relatively simple. Um, the more interesting um, approach to this um, it, but it it's more limited in how it can be applied. So the simpler form of occupancy, VM and SM, um, is easy. Um, to get the new really properly enhanced stuff, um, you need to be using ET, um, where actually we model the capacity of a vehicle, um, which with differing restrictions, um, for social distancing and things like that. And then, whereas for years and years, you were able to say, well, that vehicle's got an ocu that's got a bit of a capacity of 30 seated and, and 18 standing. Um, you know, it could be 
four seated and zero standing today, but 10 seated and zero standing tomorrow because of a rule change. So um, you're able to move capacity around um, as well as occupancy. Um, and you can either do that as a count. So, you know, one, two, three, four people or as a percentage, 10 percent, 20 percent, 90 percent um, to give you some flexibility. Um, and um, it recognizes that you need to know more than just you know how many people are on on a vehicle. Um, you might want to know um, uh, how many people there are in wheelchairs and how many push chairs and or prams or, or bicycles are on that vehicle so that you can help people that are planning to board that. Um, down the road um, to know whether there's there's capacity for whatever their requirement is, um, and um, if you've got um, double deckers, then is it is there an upstairs and a downstairs, for example? What's the uh, what's the current occupancy um, on each of the levels? And um, probably just for um, rail um and uh, ferries and and things like that what fare so um you know how many first class seats are there how many of them are full um so it's really quite flexible um way of handling capacity and occupancy um and the way that it's structured you can do this at the individual train component level so you can do it at a carriage level so you can say this carriage has got 10 first class seats and 20 second class um, for example um, and you can piece that together um, and it also has a concept of reservations as well um, so um, you can help um, provide more accurate likely occupancy um, downstream um so that was occupancy um there has been a um a, a way of saying that a prediction or a or a or a location update um is inaccurate um there's some um improvements um to the to the way that you can provide reasoning you know why is that prediction inaccurate um, it's stuck in a traffic jam, that sort of thing. Um, and so hopefully that will be um, useful, particularly when you start to look at new features and functionality, for example, with the control actions. So a control room, a depot might want to know why um, a prediction isn't as, as good as it could be. Um, one of the bugbears of um, Siri when you're using it in big systems is the filtering. Um, you tend to get very large um, dumps of data going on. So there's some more um, filtering capacity. So it introduces things like filtering by vehicle mode. Um, so yeah, I just want buses or I just want trains. Um, different product categories, um, stop points. So you can say, actually, I'm only interested in this one stop. Um, don't send me um, anything else. So if you, all you've got is um, Siri ET, for example, um, you can say, I'm only interested in, in the estimated times at a particular stop, even if there are multiple vehicles going past it. Um, and um, you can filter by um, by validity as well. So I'm only interested in data um, that's got um, you know uh, a day look ahead, for example, rather than you know if, if you were able to get a PT file for for a week ahead, you can actually filter it um, more locally. Um, Within SX, there's the ability to filter by user need. So you can query a disruption system and say, actually only tell me about um, things that might affect me with a user need because I'm in a wheelchair. 
um, or I'm partially sighted, that sort of thing. Um, and you can also um, do some um, requesting as part of filtering on, on the shortest cycle time. Um, so actually, I'm only interested in um, data that, that's been updated at a particular frequency. So those are the changes that cut across um, different um, Siri uh, functions. Um, within Siri PT, um, you can remove journeys and interchanges from data sets without having to um, redo the whole lot. And you can do that silently. For the rail industry, that seems to be a big deal. Um, there's some improvements for where you've got um, effectively connections and interchanges. So feeder and distributor journey references are improved um, to help um, cross journey planning. Um, within Siri ET, there's a few more um, changes. So um, there was actually quite a lot of problems with um, where and how you could record call updates. So um, when a vehicle was updating a stop, um, it was really quite inconsistent um, into the different bits of ET where you could do things. Um, but it sorted out um, that um, and so and as well as um, being able to get um, actual arrival and departure times um, just as incremental updates. So one of the use cases for Siri ET is to get data that you then put into your performance management system, your historical reporting system. So actually you're not interested in any um, of the, um, the planned, the predicted uh, arrival and departure times, you're just interested in what actually happened. So this helps with the filtering for that. Um, e uh, occupancy we've talked about, prediction inaccuracy we've talked about. Um, there's some um, improvements and more consistency issues resolved around arrival departure status. Um, as well as boarding activity, um, which was, if you've ever tried to use it, horribly um, mixed up. Um, and um, because of the changes to um, keys and boarding position, there's some updates to stop assignment, um, as well as um, being able to do um, the more clever things about um, linking schedule stop points to, to physical locations to do with the, uh, the, the flexible service stuff. Um, and um, just like PT, inter interchange connections, so feeder and distributor services um, and journey relation uh, comes into that. Um, for Siri VM, um, introduces the compound train stuff and the key assignment. Um, so you can move that around in real time um, and prediction quality. Siri SM, um, again, the same stuff, compound trains, key assignments um, and prediction quality. So the first two are, are, are quite important if you're trying to present stuff to customers. Um, and you've got a display at a platform or a bus stop, for example, um, they can be uh, quite useful. Um, and SM's got the, the more detailed um, occupancy. Um, FM facilities monitoring, um, there's been quite a lot of work and change to this. Um, so um, as NetX has developed, there's been quite a lot of development of the facilities model um, in that. Um, and so all of that's brought forward into, into Siri FM. Um, and um, we introduced new modes. Um, so um, they're not really new modes, they've been around for a while, but they're new modes for 
um, transport planning and uh, and information systems. So, you know, bike, car, scooter, all of the things that you hear a lot about in the press. Um, so it allows us to handle um, that. So you can have a facility at which you can um, rent um, a scooter. You can find out how many spaces there are if you're bringing one back or how many um, scooters are at a particular location um, and, and you know charge levels and, and, and that sort of thing um, as well as being able to um, update the location of a facility on the fly um, never thought needed up until you start to handle new modes where um, yeah the you know you might have um, bike drop-off points and collections that, that are moving around and vary over time. Um, and um, quite an important one from a, an accessibility point of view, um, able to um, classify features more aligned to um, user need. Um, so, you know, is it suitable for wheelchairs? Um, historically, you've just had a series of features and you have to piece that together. So, you know, if there's an escalator or stairs and no lift, then actually that's not wheelchair accessible, but you can make some generalizations um, within this, which will be quite useful um, in advance of journey planners and, and information systems being able to, to do some of the more com complex piecing together of information to come up with a result. Um, also within FM, um, monitoring information. So um, the concept of being able to, to monitor how many bikes are at a, at a bike, you know, um, park type arrangement um, and how often that monitoring is taking place. So, you know, if that's only monitored once a day at eight o'clock in the morning and it's seven o'clock in the morning, you might have a le different level of confidence than if you were at five past eight in the morning. Um, and um, again, all of the new mode stuff about, um, you know, how many vehicles are there, um, how many seats, all of that sort of thing. Um, and a couple of different ways of um, counting that a bit like occupancy, you can have it as uh, as actual numbers or or as percentages. Um, the last one um, is SX. Um, again, there's been quite a lot of um, work done here. A lot of it um, is um, as a result of other things happening. Um, and needing to catch up with that. So um, things like effect scope. Um, so um, when you define um, a, um, a disruption, you can now more flexibly say, um, this is what the disruption affects. Um, you can get more granular. Um, so you could actually say this bus stop is only closed for a particular bus operator or a particular line, for example, whereas historically the bus stop was closed or it was open. Um, it introduces a uh, concept into disruptions of user need um, to help make it more personalised. Um, so you know, the lift is out, so therefore the disruption affects people with a particular user need. Um, and um, uh, one one of the one of the challenges that adopters of Siri SX have been finding over the last couple of years, as they've really started to use it, um, because this is the newest of of the Siri um, functions, um, is um, it hasn't really fitted with the way that we think as humans um, and the way that humans manage disruptions. So um, it's got some improvements in there for things like advice type and advice name, saves having to um, piece together some of the bits of information that you have to now. So 
you probably find most messages that you want to present to customers being put into uh, advice type and advice name in future. Um, we've talked about affected networks, that's in the wrong place, um, but um, this is where we get into the way that we think as humans rather than IT systems. So uh, passenger information action is added. So typically as as humans, we go, um, you know, so there's, um, there's a road closure. Uh, this is why, um, this is what it's affecting. This is what we recommend you do. Um, and it's going to last for a day. Um, that was really quite complex um, up till now. So the introduction of passenger information action hopefully helps make SX much more usable um, in a um, in a way that um, data consumers of, of, of SX can can use more easily. Uh, there'll be less having to piece bits of information together and things like that. Um, and um, the biggest um, bits of um, change to, to SX um, are quite geeky underneath the covers. Um, so a lot of the um, enumerations to do with um, you know, why something's closed or whether you know, things like it's a thunderstorm or it's heavy rain and things like that, they're all linked to a standard called TPEG which comes from road data um, and road disruption stuff. Um, historically, um, they were all linked very tightly to TPEG. So um, they would say things like PTI underscore zero three, and that's what you would um, supply. And then you would look up what that code was. Well, TPEG has changed quite a lot in the last couple of years and will continue to evolve. And so therefore, rather than being tied to um, the, uh, the detailed enumerations, moving to uh, descriptors that match with TPEG and the Datex um, equivalents, which is another um, standard. And so that means it's more flexible um, when it comes to uh, changes in the other standards. Um, and the other one is the um, uh, UMS group, the, the, the German um, body that's a bit like Arctic in that it worked well. Yeah, German is a federated country um, and each of the um, different regions works quite independently. Um, and within VDV, they've got a, um, a group that's trying to consolidate um, what each of the regions is doing. Um, and um, that means that there's quite a lot of, uh, of tweaks underneath the hood that don't change things too much for, for most users, but it's really important for the Germans uh, and the Swiss, um, because the Swiss follow what the Germans do really quite closely. Um, so um, that's SX, and that is all of the changes. Um, has anybody got any questions? Um, Nathaniel's asking about capacity for wheelchairs and prams when it's crowded. Yeah, so people might be standing in that space. Um, that's an interesting one. Um, that gets to passenger counting and that sort of thing. Um, within Artig, there's a working group at the moment looking at passenger counting um, and we've touched on how you might count or see whether a, a wheelchair or a pram space is full or not. Um, so uh, it's quite challenging. Um, I think probably the, the result of those conversations at the moment. Hopefully you've not all gone to sleep because I realise that um, there's quite a lot of um, um, technical stuff in there, which won't make sense to necessarily all of you. No? Okay. 
Um, Nathaniel is asking whether Artig is involved in IT for PT activities. Um, not formally, um, but um, we've got quite close links through um, some of the working groups with IT for PT um, and um, through the SEND groups. So, for example, um, Artig run the SEN on bus communications group, um, and so uh, I work quite closely with uh, with Emmanuel from um, IT for PT um, in turning the IT for PT work into um, SEN standards. So we've got a good handle on what's going on, but we're not formally involved. If nobody's got any questions, then um, plug for um, future events. Um, we're doing some work with um, DFT to um, support the the rollout of the Analyze Bus Open Data Service. So this is the um, the the analysis server, the the performance and um, um, reporting services for BODS and um, there's a series of webinars that we're hosting um, over the next few months. Um, we've got a special page um, that, that lists those. Uh, feel free to join those um, if you want. Um, and um, we're beginning to plan the next um, uh, webinars which um, think going to be on things like display technology and smart shelters um, and what might they be able to do um, and if anybody wants to know and hear about anything else then please do um, let us know um, and we can get um, people together to talk about it Okay, if there are no questions, then um, thank you all for your time um, this afternoon. I hope you um, got something out of it and found it useful. Um, and um, please do get in touch um, if you've got questions afterwards or you want to talk about anything else to do with um, public transport technology. Um, and see you soon. Uh, on another session. Thank you all. Thank you for watching this Artig webinar. To find out more about Artig and our work, then please visit our website at rtig.org.uk. Thank you. <laughs>